One of Johnny Depp's most powerful witnesses so far has been his childhood friend, Isaac Baruch. And as we saw as this trial unfolded, one of the reasons for that is because Elaine gave us a masterclass in what not to do on cross-examination. This is the first of a series of videos I'm going to do going through Isaac Baruch's cross-examination, and we're going to break down what it is that makes him so effective as a witness, and we're also going to look at what the mistakes were that Elaine made in this process that led to him having one of the most memorable moments of this trial so far. In this first part, what we're going to see is how right out of the gate, Isaac is the one taking control of this cross-examination. We're going to see that Elaine has a script that she's following, and she's not comfortable with what happens when Isaac refuses to stick to the script. And we're also going to see that it's not a very good script. Let's go ahead and get started. All right. Cross-examination. Let's start with the makeup. Now, you know that Ms. Hurd was... Excuse me. Right out of the gate. Didn't hear what she said. What does he do? Does he let it go? Does he try to pretend, pass, act like he heard it? Knows what she's talking about? No, 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 no. Not our Isaac. He interrupts her. <laughs> interrupts her, stops her mid-sentence to tell her, didn't hear what you said. This is a guy instantly, from the moment he has opened his mouth, you know, you're not going to control this guy. This guy is going to control himself. Uh, he's very dangerous from the outset. Instantly, Elaine should have caught, caught on to this. I I'm didn't sorry? hear the beginning of what you started saying. I said, let's start with the makeup. Okay. And so what do we have? We have Elaine going back to the, to the script. Let's start with the makeup. She doesn't have another option for taking control back of this situation. So what she ends up doing is just complying with exactly what Isaac just told her to do, which is repeat what you just said. She could have paraphrased. She could have just asked her question. She could have moved on in any number of ways, uh, but she didn't. And from this very, very first exchange, we see Isaac is the one in charge. Okay. You're aware that Ms. Hart, Ms. Heard. And there we see Elaine's already knocked off knocked off her game. She's out of her comfort zone. Um, she's already been rattled when she hasn't even asked a question yet. How do we know? She can't even say her own client's name right. Something that should roll off your tongue with so much ease, uh, but she doesn't. She stumbles, can't can't get back to her, her instinct, um, calls, calls her client Ms. Hart. Has both modeled and been an actor and had been for many years before you met her, correct? I knew she acted. I didn't know she was a model. And now here we see Isaac is very comfortable answering the question exactly how he wants to. He is not going to be directed by Elaine to answer this, this compound question with a simple yes or no. He's going to explain and clarify what he's talking about. Red flag number two, Elaine, should have caught on. Okay. Were you aware that she had a commercial uh, uh, agreement with L'Oreal, for example? When now or back then? What, what's your knowledge? And now he just forced her to re-ask her question. What do you mean, Elaine? You're, you're not being clear. You're not asking good, good questions here. Am I aware? Am I aware at what point? Not going to, well, I mean, yes, I guess. Not going to give a timid type of, type of answer. Not going to comply with how she's trying to lay this scenario out. Very clear. 
this man is going to say what he has to say on this stand. And if you haven't caught on to this by now, you're going to get hurt. I don't know any of that. Okay. Have you ever been with Ms. Hurd when she has put makeup on? I've been in the room, yeah, when she's putting... When Look at this. It's such a green rookie mistake to ask a question you don't know the answer to on cross-examination. See, cross-examination is not about inviting the adverse witness to explain, to clarify, to fill in more details of, of this account that they've offered. It's your opportunity to confront them with facts that are adverse to their position or to their credibility. And Elaine doesn't, doesn't have that in her script, okay? She has uh, some idea in, in her mind of how she is going to trap Isaac in some type of logical conundrum and force him to concede things um, that he's just not going to do. So she thought she knew the answer to this question. Have you ever seen her put, put makeup on? She thought this was going to be a very, very simple no. And she didn't know that. She assumed it. And look what happened when it wasn't the answer she thought she was going to get. <gasps> knocked her head back. It's, it's like... It, it's like she got caught with a jab <laughs> that she didn't see coming because she just went running, running forward with, with her head first. And uh, that caught her. She wasn't expecting it. Her whole body language shows that uh, that was not what she was hoping to get out of that exchange. And makeup was getting put on her? Yeah. When makeup was being put on her, was this for some acting role or something like that? It was an event that they were going to. Mm -hmm. So that was somebody else applying makeup to Miss yeah. Heard, who was going to have some gala event that she was going to. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, Elaine, what was the what was the point at all of that entire exchange? And how could you maybe have avoided that by asking a better question in the first place than have you seen Ms. Heard put makeup on? Have you ever been with Ms. Heard? in her bathroom or anything when she's applying her makeup in the morning. No. So now Elaine's trying to recover. This is what happens when Elaine has to go off script. She asks a facially absurd question. Have you ever been with Amber Heard while she's in the bathroom? And Isaac's face right here is just screaming <laughs> that absurdity. He clearly thinks this is the dumbest question that she's asked him so far. And he's a very open and expressive witness. He communicates with far more than, than just the words that he uses. Um, wonderful facial expressions that the jury is, is going to be seeing. And so he has communicated loud and clear the contempt that he has for what she just asked him. Okay. Do, do you, are you familiar with Amica cream? What is it? Amica. Amica? Yes. Okay. I love this because we're now just continuing this theme of absurdity. That's really what you're asking me here. This is your gotcha. You're going to ask me about Amica. I just love how he just repeats that to underscore. What the fuck are you even talking about, Elaine? Amica? No. Okay. Do you know what? And here I just want to point out, literally scripted literally scripted up there at the podium with her yellow legal pad and with both fingers <laughs> following the script making sure that she catches all of these really critical and points critically important points um critically important right that we not only mention the amica cream but also the concealer foundation tents and powders 
Can't get by without asking every single one of those. Make sure that they're that they're on the script. What type of foundation Ms. Hurd uses? No. Do you know what type of concealer Ms. Hurd uses? No. Do you know what type of tint Ms. Hurd uses? I have no clue. Do you know what types of powders Ms. Hurd uses? No. Okay. So when you're saying that you didn't notice any makeup, would it be fair to say that you yourself are not familiar with what type of makeup Amber Heard uses on a daily basis? I don't know what she uses on a daily basis. This is an example of the question that you didn't need to ask. Any, pretty much any time you're asking, so what you're trying to do is you're trying to come up with a sort of snarky summation of the answers that the witness just gave. You're trying to lead them down this path of concession to give you something that is really critical to your case. Now, Isaac, as you can see by his expression, clearly does not think that this is particularly critical to her case. Uh, she could have just asked him, isn't it the case that you aren't familiar with Amber Heard's daily makeup regimen? Yes, no. And uh, we, we would have saved this whole, this whole drama, um, but that's part of what shows us that Elaine is stuck to the script and that it is not in fact a particularly good script. That's my point. Now, the first time that you saw her, which was May 22nd. Yeah. Yeah. Isaac is ready to talk about May 22nd, Elaine. Did you catch that? Yeah. She doesn't catch it. Ms. Hurd was there. Were you aware she was on her way to somebody else's birthday party? Not yours, but somebody else's that day. No. Okay. Can you tell me what her hairstyle was that day? It's just down. Down as in? Just regular. How uh, she has it up now. She's got some kind of hairstyle. But no, she's, she was no hair down, regular, no makeup, just hanging. What? So just in case it wasn't clear that Elaine made the mistake the first time of asking the question she didn't know the answer to, she now goes ahead and does it again. What was, what was her hairstyle? She didn't think Isaac was going to remember this, but Isaac clearly does remember this. By now, you should be getting the hint that he has a very detailed recollection of these circumstances that you're asking him about. Isaac also, for the first time here, gets to slip in a little counterpunch in his answer. No makeup. She didn't ask him about the makeup, but that's a detail he remembers. And as long as she is going to allow him and even invite him to describe what he remembers about these details, he is going to tell what he wants to say. That's how he's going to frame his answer. Isaac is clearly in control. Look what a great time he's having <laughs> with this process. He is so happy to answer these questions. And so far it is going very well for him. When you say no makeup, you don't know she was not wearing makeup, correct? For a fact? Correct. No. And so Elaine has to try to recover there and Isaac is able to block it, deflect it by pointing out, I mean, for a fact, no, I just, I just know what she looks like in her face. You know, I know, I know I've seen her with makeup on. I've seen her have the gala makeup on. I've seen her, you know, because she's my neighbor. This is all clearly coming through for a fact. Of course, I don't know. She didn't spot on a, a piece of concealer somewhere. Um, but this is not undermining Isaac's testimony that she did not appear to have a stitch of makeup on her when he saw her without bruises. And you don't know whether she had applied Amica cream, correct? And so <laughs> again, <laughs> to try to recover from this position, Elaine just goes back to her script, this, this 
painful script of the Amica cream and the concealer and the foundation and the tent and the powder. This is time number two, and it's not any more effective this time, uh, but Isaac is now starting to get the get the point that this is what she's got. This is what she's brought to this to this cross examination. So he's starting to get even more comfortable because it, this is nowhere near as as hard as he thought maybe it was going to be. No, and I didn't even know what Amica cream is. And Isaac speaks for all of us there. What the fuck is Amica cream, Elaine? The fuck? And you don't know whether she had had applied concealer or foundation or powder or tint, correct? That's correct. Okay. Now, if she's going out to a party, yeah. do you think she would want to have her bruise exposed? Another just really stupid question. This is, this is the type of question that, again, you use your closing argument to make this type of point to the jury. It's just an argument. All you're going to be doing is, is getting up there and arguing with her about, you know, what, what, what somebody would do or, or not do. Um, and there's, there's going to be different perspectives on all of that. This isn't a fact that can be elicited from the witness. This is just nitpicking. Very ineffective. Objection, Your Honor. What's the objection? Calls for speculation. All right, I'll sustain the objection. Okay. Next question. And so we see first blood of this round goes to Johnny. Objection sustained. Terrible a question, Elaine. Um, let's try to do better. So, um... Do you recall what Ms. Hurd was wearing that day? What do you think Isaac's going to say here? Has he remembered these types of details so far, Elaine? How, how has that played out in your script so far? You asked about uh, her hair. You asked about uh, her, her makeup. Um, how do you think this one's going to go? You know something? I could have sworn she had on a schmata dress, a uh, hippie dress at that particular time, but I could be confusing it with June 3rd. She's got this Victorian type of uh, uh, long hippie dress that has embroidery, and I, she definitely was wearing that that, that night. Isaac remembers a massive amount of detail. And the fact that she hasn't caught on to this and hasn't stopped inviting him to provide those details that just bolsters his account in the eyes of the jury is astonishing. All right, but but uh, let's go back to May 22nd. Do you yeah. recall what she was wearing? I could have swore she was worn, uh, wearing a, a, another schmata dress that I've seen her hanging around uh, uh, the apartment with. And, and do you recall what color no okay do you recall what jewelry miss no. heard was wearing that day no okay again look at his body posture here no he can't answer those specific details but do they matter elaine does it matter that he couldn't see uh, couldn't remember what earrings she had on does that somehow make it less likely that he would have noticed a bruise on her face in the days after May 21st in all of the multiple times that he saw her. So effect, ineffective with this line of questioning. Now, you indicated that there was a security guard there and there yes. was Josh Drew, correct? Yeah. And was there anyone else there? Yeah, the two locksmiths. Okay. So and also in the apartment for a fleeting second, person went walking by and who seemed to me look like it was Raquel Pennington, but it could be, it could have been uh, another friend that was supposedly staying with them. Okay. So you saw somebody come by. So, so how many, no, huh? go. No, Elaine, that ain't what I said. I didn't say I saw somebody come by. Not going to let her put words in his mouth. 
He's going to explain what he saw. He's going to clarify what he saw. And uh, he's going to retake control of Elaine trying to skew his words. We'll go through the living room and then they're out of the picture because they went upstairs. So they're at this. That's somebody that else was in that room and but walking by. OK. So this is where we're going to go ahead and stop the first video. I hope that you have seen from this that just in the first few minutes of this cross examination, we're starting to see these patterns emerging where Elaine expects certain things from Isaac that she is just not getting and she's not prepared to be able to adjust on the fly. And she doesn't seem to notice how dangerous this witness is because of the fact that he is going to be in control of this examination. In part two, we're going to see how Isaac takes this a step further and establishes dominance in the cross-examination. And he does this by taking away Elaine's favorite weapon, the Amica Cream. Join me there.